let's get into it. And you kind of alluded to it there in the top. The Saints lose 20 to 3 to the Miami Dolphins. They fall to 7 and 8 on the season, now currently sit as the 10 seed in the NFC, not out of the playoff picture by any stretch of the imagination with two games left to go. New Orleans, according to ESPN's FPI, a 34 percent chance now to make the nfc playoffs uh but last night man look they were put in a really tough spot there's really no way around that 22 players was the final tally out with covid you had three coaches and support staff members as well for a grand total of 25 a rookie starting at quarterback you were missing your backbone on defense into mario davis although that unit still played pretty well uh overall just a really tough spot to be in, a team that fought really hard, but it was ultimately just too much to overcome. And I know Sean Payton doesn't want to make excuses. He said it again in his post-game press conference yesterday. Uh, I'll make excuses for you, though. You were missing 22 players. You were starting a rookie quarterback. You were missing team captains on defense. The rookie quarterback you were starting had about four days or so to prepare for this game and this opportunity. Uh it was not, an, and on top of that, you were playing on a Monday night, which made postponing the game even a little bit harder. It was just not an ideal situation going up against a team that had won six in a row, now seven in a row. It was nuts, man. It reminded me a lot of the game last year against Denver where the Saints were facing a wide receiver at quarterback, and you just got the vibe watching the game, for me broadcasting the game, however you were consuming, that maybe this game should not be played, especially given after after the NFL postponed a lot of these other games that had similar conditions. But Sean Payton can't make excuses. It, it, it is our job to make excuses. And the reality is the Saints had no shot last night. Their defense had to play amazing, which you could argue that they did, but still, as good as they, as good as they played, they did leave a couple of plays out there there, I think, including the one fumble uh, caused by Marcus Davenport where he tried to scoop up the ball. Next time, maybe just dive on it in a game where you know you're going to have no offense. And Sean Payton highlighted the kicking game, which I thought was interesting. Brett Meyer made his lone field goal. I know the Dolphins missed the field goal as well, but the defense had to play out of their mind. You can argue that they did, but they never had a shot last night, especially when you talk about Ian Book. And the stats don't look good. The interception to open the game was a disaster. I thought at that point, Musso, it's going to be tough for the Saints to score seven points in, in general in this game. You can argue that the game was over right then and there, but Ian Book, 12 for 20, 135 yards with that pick and a second pick. The numbers don't look great. He had a lot of really bad moments where he looked really lost, but he's also playing with a depleted offensive line and nobody to throw it to. So I don't think it's really fair to evaluate Ian Book's performance yesterday. Yeah, Sean Payton said the same thing after the game. It's not. It's tough to evaluate him. I, look, we'll give it our best shot. When I look at what Ian Book did last night, I mean, was that really not what you expected, though? There were going to be throws you wanted back. There were going to be some throws that you said, oh, well, that was actually pretty good. He had a couple nice throws down the field to Marquez Callaway, but ultimately, no, it wasn't going to be a banner night. They couldn't get Alvin Kamara going. That's going to impact your quarterback. They could not protect Ian Book last night if their lives were... Cesar Ruiz was awful. Yeah, we 51 about was him. bad. He whiffed, whiffed multiple times in that game. You can't do you can't do that with Taysom Hill. You can't do that with Drew Brees back there. You damn sure cannot do that with a rookie quarterback back there. They just set him up for no success there. Again, you couldn't get Alvin Kamara going. It is tough to evaluate him, but if I'm looking at it, he did some things that were eh, but also some things where you're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. And I think ultimately that's where you were going to be regardless of the performance, regardless of the outcome when you looked at Ian Book after last night's game. So yeah, you can't put it all on number 16, but he definitely didn't do anything to help the Saints' case. Uh, I, I thought maybe you would have expected a little bit more out of mobility from him when he did escape the pocket. He didn't get rid of the football. Uh, was running out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage sometimes. Took a couple sacks, but uh, just an unenviable position to make your first NFL start in. Yeah, he looked like a rookie quarterback, man. It's to be expected, like you said. And if we're looking for compliments for Ian Book, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. It's cool. But I thought a lot of times where the Saints offensive line did play well and the, the protection did hold up, he looked really comfortable in the pocket. He just looked really natural, like he knew what he was doing. And he seemed to be going through his progressions well. But like I said, the offensive line, it felt like half of the night they were terrible. And he was getting hit. That resulted in the eight sacks. And he was definitely hit double-digit times. But it feels like when the protection was holding up, nobody was getting open. Callaway did a couple of times. 
times, but just no separation from the wide receivers. So there was nowhere for Ian to go with the football. But he did he did look really natural. And I even said on the broadcast, he looks like he had a little bit of better pocket presence than what you see from Taysom Hill. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with Ian Book going forward in future preseasons. But it's just unfortunate that the first time we saw him in a real game was going to be in a situation where he had no chance of succeeding. And that's what happened last night. Uh, so, I mean, that, that's kind of just been the... MO of the Saints offense here recently anyway in general. Uh, it just felt like they have no chance of succeeding. I know you mentioned earlier that it felt like the game was kind of just over immediately when they couldn't get the ball in the end zone. It felt very similar to last week, although you won the game against the Buccaneers, but it was 6 to nothing for the longest time, and it just felt if the Buccaneers ever do break through and get in the end zone and make it 7-6, to six, it's, it's going to be over. And you very much had that feeling last night, and ultimately it was over. But the defense, Mario... I know we touched on it a little bit. I think we should dive a little bit deeper. Marcus Davenport had another really good game. I thought Pete Werner filling in for Demario Davis, getting the defenses aligned, played really well. Zach Bond, eh, it wasn't pretty, especially in coverage most of the night. Uh, but your secondary held up very nicely as well. You had the one long pass completed over Debo, But other than that, uh, Marcus Lattimore had an interception on an overthrow. We mentioned Davenport was very consistent in putting pressure on Tua, really taking advantage of what's not a great Dolphins offensive line, had the forced fumble. So uh, the defense, they only gave up seven. They only gave up one touchdown. Yeah, uh, They did give up the two field goals, but only the one touchdown. They kept you in that game really the entire night. Yeah, and Cam Jordan, once again, coming to another, life. Yeah. He has a double two, another two-sack game. He continues to play really well. And we talked about before the game, Uso, that we were worried not just about Demario Davis' X's and O's, but his leadership. And I think the Saints missed that last night. I think there were moments, even for the defense, where on the sideline they looked a little bit frustrated. They looked a little bit out of sorts. But as far as on the field, like you said, Pete Werner held it down. Ten tackles in the game, including seven solo tackles. So Pete Werner, I don't know what's going to happen with Demario Davis going forward as far as his future in New Orleans and his long-term future because we know he's towards the tail end. But if Pete Werner is capable of playing the Mike linebacker like that, you might have a really good replacement in tow. And that has to be really encouraging if you're a New Orleans Saints fan. It does. Pete Werner has made a, a, a lot of strides so far this year. That that was that was encouraging. And again, just the overall performance from the Saints defense was encouraging. Now you turn the page. Carolina Panthers, America's game of the week on Sunday, 325 Eastern, excuse me, 325 Central kickoff for that one here for the Saints. And man, first and foremost, you got to hopefully get some guys back. And it would stand to reason you will have a, a good number of those guys back just given when they tested and went into protocols. And if that's the case, you like New Orleans chances, given they can all stay healthy. Maybe you get Ryan Ramchick back all, uh, off the injury report here finally. And uh, maybe Teron Armstead can come back in. I thought that was another huge loss for the, this team when they have to play without their two tackles is just subpar, to put it mildly, offensively. But hopefully you get that guy back as well. And you feel pretty good about going up against the Panthers, going up against the Falcons. Uh, you're going to need to win that win out now, definitely the rest of the way at nine and eight and have maybe, maybe depending on what happens uh, the the rest of the way with some other teams battling for that spot, go your way in order for the Saints to get in. 34% chance though. Yeah, that's the, that's the unfortunate thing about the loss last night, Musso. You're in a position to where if the Saints could have just found a way to win that game, found a way, you could have pretty much controlled your own destiny. Now you're in a position where you're going to need some help. And we'll talk about it a little bit later down the show, but now you're in a situation where, situation where you have the scoreboard watch, and that's not good when you can, when you can rather uh, control your own destiny. So the Saints, it was going to be tough for them last night, but now you have two games that, in my opinion, are winnable. Carolina is reeling right now, and you get them at home. And then the game against that land is going to be tough on the road. But last game of the season, like you said, hopefully by then you get some guys back, especially along the offensive line. And you're still in pretty decent position to make the playoffs, but you don't control your own destiny anymore. Hey, man, scoreboard watching used to be a staple of Saints playoff haunts. That's true. Only, hey. only recently have they just been clinching spots sometimes in November. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, man, you used to always be, all right, well, wait, if this team loses, this team loses, and the Saints win, they're in. That, that used to be the way of the land. And maybe I'm way overreacting here, but just an observation. I think Alvin Kamara looked just a little bit disinterested last night towards the end, and maybe it's a little bit of something that I heard Draymond Green talk about when he was on the Golden State Warriors, and they were dominating early in his career, always competing for championships, always amongst the best of the best. When you go to a situation where you're barely competing for anything, and that you're now a mediocre team, closer to being a bad team than you are a great team, that can wear on somebody who's, had, who's known nothing but success with this team. And again, maybe that's a big overreaction, but Alvin did look a little bit disinterested last night towards the end. And this season, just in terms of the losing, is something new for him with the New Orleans Saints, and it has to be tough. 
frustration can definitely breed that in, in certain players. I don't know if I'd look too much into it yet, though. Yet. Yeah, we'll see.